Dr. Juanita Mercer, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Passionate Reflections about Holy Week. Today is Holy Thursday, also known as Maundy Thursday, and a little bit I'm going to tell you exactly why that is. And today's topic is the Passover meal, also known as the Lord's Supper, um, the First Communion, uh, it's all there. <laughs> um, but there's so much that's going on. Um, on this day in history, as is the night before um, Jesus dies on the cross, before he's crucified. And I think it's important to bring attention to the fact that, you know, thinking, what would I do or what would I want to be um, on the last night um, before my death? And here it is, Jesus is having dinner with his disciples. The focus is not his family, his mother, who's still alive, and his brother. His focus is not tra uh, traveling and seeing something on his bucket list or doing something on his bucket list. His focus is us. His focus is on the people that he's called to carry on his mission to uh, continue to walk in purpose after he's gone. And I'm like, Jesus, oh my God, thank you for teaching us that and showing us how important it is to keep purpose at the forefront of our life. From his entry into Jerusalem, all the teachings, everything he's doing this week has been with purpose in mind. Not at one point is he selfish. Not at one point is he saying, well, this is what I wanted to do while I lived here. You know, while I walked the earth. This is, this is the things I wanted to experience. He's not sitting around talking about, woe is me. Um, you know, tomorrow is it. Um, I have to go suffer. I have to go die. I'm doing this for God. Can't believe it. Y'all don't even believe me. Y'all don't even, <laughs> you know, there's so many things he could have said and did. And yet here he is having Passover meal with his disciples and teaching still because that's who he was. And as a teacher, that means a lot to me. That means a lot to me. That until the very end, he was walking in his purpose. And so here he is. He's prepared. You know, um, he sent, I think it was Peter and John ahead to prepare the Passover meal. And one of the first thing he does, as recorded in John chapter 13, is to wash their feet. In fact, John is the only one who records the washing of the feet. Um, Matthew, Mark, and Luke did not. Um, but here, John, I'm so glad he did, um, takes the time to tell us that Jesus took on humility and washed our feet, their dirty feet. Um, I talked about this in one of my uh, lessons in China, uh, in Jinan. I was talking about Easter, um, and one of the mandates as a English teacher was to talk about American holidays and culture. And I welcomed it um, because that was my opportunity to talk about Jesus because just about every American holiday is rooted in Christian tradition. That's not my fault, right? <laughs> um, so I took that opportunity to talk about um, the history of Easter and what Christians do to celebrate Easter and why we celebrate Easter and who what non-Christians do um, to celebrate Easter and spring and new life coming forth and the Easter bunny and all of that. But I also talked about the washing of feet and because of the culture of teacher and student relationships in China, I wanted to introduce this, you know, um, this story of Jesus washing the disciples' feet and what did that mean to them? And one of my students said the most beautiful thing. Her reflection was, she said, you know, this is really odd to me. 
And I said, why is this odd? She said, because he was the teacher. And in respect to him, they should have been washing his feet. But instead, he was washing theirs. And I said, so what does that mean to you? She said, well, it means that he was really humble and he didn't think too much of himself as a teacher that he couldn't serve or help, you know, his students. I was like, you got it. You know, I was, it was just such a wonderful thing. And we used that opportunity to talk about what it means to be humble. Right. And to do nice things for each other. And so um, that's just, you know, one of the blessings that I encountered, you know, um, in teaching English abroad. But here it is. Jesus is um, washing their feet and then he proceeds to the meal. And um, as he's sharing this meal with them, breaking bread with them. Uh, which is really important because, again, he could have chosen to be with anybody um, else um, in this moment. Um, he could have chosen to just teach and say, you know what, with everything going on, we don't have time for this. But he chose to, again, put what was right in honoring God, honoring tradition, honoring that moment to remember uh, what God had done. For the Israelites with the Passover, um, he didn't put that aside. He kept his priorities straight. And again, what what a message to us of keeping our priorities straight, uh, even when we know that time is running out, especially when we know that time is running out. Jesus communed with them. He ate with them. He spent his last night before his crucifixion with them. That's how much he loved them. And that's how much Jesus loves you. You are represented at the table. And what's so beautiful is that even though he knew Judas would betray him, even though he knew Peter would deny him, and they had to, again, Jesus had to be on that cross, right? So it took the betrayal it took the denial because Jesus had a greater purpose for Peter. And if Peter had denied Jesus and had gotten caught up in all of this, guess what? It wouldn't have been two thieves next to Jesus. It would have been Peter. And he said, on this rock, I will build my church. So Peter couldn't, he need, he had to deny him. And I know all the time we don't understand why we do the things we do, why we make the mistakes we make. But God is so good and so big and so gracious that he still is good in the midst of all of that. Now, that doesn't give us permission to just act a fool and and do the things we want. But I just want you to see how amazing God is, that even in the midst of chaos and confusion and disloyalty and hurt and pain, that God still has a plan. That if you still give your heart to him and continue to love him and choose to obey him, everything works out for our good. Everything. And Jesus died for each and every one of them. Everyone. He didn't say, hey, everyone drink but Judas. Everyone eat but Peter. He said, Every one of you, each of you, eat this bread and drink of this cup because it is you I am dying for. It's my blood that will be shed for each of you. And you need to know that the blood that Jesus sheds tomorrow on Good Friday, there is blood on that cross for you too. So earlier, I mentioned that I would tell you what Monday Thursday means. And Monday is from the Latin phrase, Mazantum Novum Dabobis, which means a new commandment I give you. Mazantum, mandate, okay, or another word, command. That comes from John chapter 13, verse 34, where Jesus says, So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. 
just as I have loved you, you should love each other. And then verse 35 says, your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. My disciples, Christians, followers of Christ. That's how people will know. That's how the dark world will know that you are children of light, that you love one another. Not that you hate on one another, not that you ridicule one another, not that you condemn one another, but that you love one another. And so that is the mandate that Jesus has given us, to love one another. So this Monday, Thursday, I pray that you really take it to heart, the importance of humbling ourselves, serving each other, and loving each other every single day. Jesus died for you. He loves you. And just know that you are represented at the table. That's it for today's reflection. Join me tomorrow for another episode. And remember, in everything you do and with everything you have, love God and love people. Goodbye.